that we got going on here, right? Hope you like that little uh, dance and uh, music combo. We're about to talk about sales of partnership interests. This is a, a favorite by students because like other topics with robots, such as mechanical steps of 704C, book to tax disparity allocation, this topic is very mechanical, especially when it comes to the seller. For the buyer as well, but the seller even more so. You're going to see that what we're dealing with here is a partner is selling his or her or its interests to another partner, to someone outside the partnership. And they're receiving cash or other items, other consideration. We have to determine the consequences. We look under code section 741 and determining the actual effect the uh, tax consequences to the partner and what you're going to see is that we have a three-step process step one is to calculate the realized gain or loss and recognize gain or loss on under section 1001 like we normally do amount realized minus adjusted basis then step two is then to break out from that step one overall calculation the amount of ordinary income or ordinary loss from what we call hot assets, 751A hot assets, with respect to sales of partnership interest hot assets. Now, I want to stress that the hot assets for this sale of partnership interest test, these are different. Some of them are the same, but some are different when it comes to the 751B distribution hot assets, specifically inventory. Make sure you write that down. Inventory is different when it comes to hot assets for 751A sales of partnership interest and 751B. Uh, distributions. The main reason or main idea is that for 751A sales of partnership interest, all inventory is considered a hot asset. Whether it's depreciated value, appreciated, doesn't matter how much, it's all considered hot asset. You break it out as ordinary income or ordinary loss, that portion. However, for 751B, you're going to see in the distribution topic that you have to have 120% of, we call it substantially appreciated inventory, which is 100 fair market value must be 120% of adjusted basis or more, or more. So it's a calculation like that, okay? So that's very important. And there's other items as well that are hot assets. We're gonna talk about those, don't worry. So once you do step one, step two, step one, again, you get the overall realized and recognized gain or loss. Step two, you then determine, hey, how much ordinary income, ordinary loss is this partner gonna have, this selling partner gonna have? Step three is you take number one minus number two, and boom, you get number three, and that is the capital gain or capital loss, depending on the circumstances. Now, you can have all different types of variations. You can have an overall gain in situation one, I'm sorry, in step one. Step two, you have a loss, and then step three, you have even bigger gain. Or vice versa, you can have a loss here, a loss in step one, gain in step two, and then even bigger loss in step three, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, under 741, 
the sale of a partnership interest is generally viewed as care as uh, the character is capital, long-term capital gain if held for more than a year, short-term if a year or less. Again, that's why step two, we break under 751A, we break out that ordinary income, ordinary loss portion. That's very important. So those are the three steps for the seller. Again, step one, calculate the overall gain or loss, which is the 1,001 amount realized minus adjusted basis. Remember to also amount realized is actual cash received plus constructive cash. That includes liability relief plus the fair market value of non-cash property minus selling expenses. So that's amount realized. Minus the adjusted basis, that's the outside adjusted basis, including liabilities that the partner has with respect to their allocated share of liabilities. We, we did that in a previous topic. That gives the overall gain or loss in the transaction. Then step two, we calculate, again, the ordinary income, ordinary loss. I'll show you how to do that in the problems in this topic. And step three, we subtract number one minus number two, boom, number three. And that is the capital gain, capital loss, long-term if held for more than a year, short-term if a year or less. Just like that, again, mechanical. That's why we have our robot head. That's why we have the robot head. Okay, for the buyer, it depends. If the buyer, if there's no section 754 election in place by made by the partnership, the partnership makes a 754 election, then simply the buyer steps into the shoes of the seller and the buyer's adjusted basis is gonna be actual cash paid plus liabilities taken on at that time under 752, and that is gonna be the outside basis to that new to that partner. You're, you're going back and you're saying, wait, 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 do I need to rewind? Did you just say you step into the shoes of the, the buyer steps into the shoes of the seller? Yes. When it comes to a non 754 election made, if there's no 754 election made, the buyer simply steps into the seller's shoes. This creates a disparity. I'm going to show you that disparity later on. It creates a big disparity. If there's a 754 election in place, then that disparity is fixed. I'm going to talk more about that as I go through the problems, but I just want you to understand that if there's no 754 election, it creates possible tax disparities. If there is a 754 election in place, it gets rid of that. That's all you need to know right now at this time, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and let's look at the rules, and then we're going to jump into some problems and talk about those things. But really, again, keep in mind this is a mechanical area. Students and tax professionals, they love this area because it's very mechanical. If you ever forget, you can always go back to these rules. Boom, it's like riding a bike. Once you forget, you go back. Maybe you, you're a little rusty, you got to you know, brush up, but it's it's pretty manageable. It's one of the more manageable topics in partnership tax. All right, so let's get to those basics.